In this video, we're going to replace the front wheel bearing on this 2012 Mitsubishi Outlander. We're going to go ahead and remove the tire now. We're going to use a 17 millimeter socket and go ahead and take out the lug nuts and the tire. So the next step to get access to our brake pads and rotor is to go ahead and remove this caliper. We're going to do that by removing these two bolts, one on top here, one on the bottom here. We're going to go ahead and back those out with a 14 millimeter. Once you get to a certain point, you should be able to slide them out. We have a little bit more to go. Just twist and pull if they don't come out easy. And we'll do the same for the top. Before we do the top, we're going to grab a strap, a cable, something to tie this caliper up and hang it out of the way. You do not want to put pressure and kink or bend your brake hose. So let me go ahead and grab something now. And this one's in there pretty good. There is a torque spec for these bolts. Uh, somebody may not have paid attention or it might have been in there so long. I switched over to a breaker bar to get a little more leverage. Let's see if we can get that out. Just gonna go ahead and put a little rust penetrant on these bolts that we know we're gonna have to get to. Let it soak in now. With the pry bar clip tool, just try and push these bolts out. This one's been in here a while. Definitely want to take care not to mar the threads while you're doing this portion. As you can see, the caliper is very loose. Now's the time to start thinking about hanging it up and keeping one hand on it while you remove the pin. There's the pin. The caliper will slide straight back. And you want to inspect in here for any cracks, breaks, or leaks in the rubber seal around your caliper piston. That looks okay as far as leaks. So we're gonna go ahead and tie this up and out of the way. So to get this rotor out, we need to take off the caliper bracket, but now we have access to take off our brake pads first. So we're gonna do that. And just slide straight out. Same with the other one. I'm just using a panel tool to get behind them and push them out. Go ahead and pop out the old hardware. Now we can have access to our caliper bracket. On the back of the caliper bracket, you'll see two bolts. They are 17 millimeter bolts. I'll go ahead and remove those now. Same thing here, you just want to keep one hand on the bracket. Once you remove this bolt, the bracket's free. There's your bolt, and now bracket slides out of the way. So now we have access to our rotor. The rotor slides in 
over these studs. Sometimes with a little bit of persuasion, let me get that rotor to slide off. This one's been on there for a while and it's definitely seized and stuck to the hub in the back here. We're gonna use a dead blow hammer. See if we can get some movement. What you also wanna do is loosely thread at least one lug nut back on there, a few threads, so if this rotor does pop off, it's not gonna fly off onto your toes. That'll stop it. Since the dead blow didn't work, we're gonna switch to a little bit of a heavier hammer and get some hits on the back side forward to see if that helps. Now that it's free, remove this lug nut and the rotor. Now we're going to remove our castle nut, 32 millimeter. Go ahead and back that off. And our washer also. So we're just going to use a pick tool just to slide it forward. So now we have to push our axle backwards and it's keyed into a spline, so we're gonna use a sledge flat on the end, which you can also do so you don't risk ruining the threads. This thread back on your castle nut backwards, if possible. And now, use your castle nut instead of the threads. Now that that's free, go ahead and back off that castle nut. So with the 17 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove this pinch bolt. Now from the other side of this pinch bolt, we're going to go ahead and hammer that bolt through. Now we're gonna remove our tie rod end, 17 mil socket. Now you could get lucky and be able to push this straight down. We'll try tapping it with a sledge or hammer. That doesn't want to move down, so what we'll do is reinstall this nut. It is a nylon nut, so it'll only go down so far. We're just going to use that to hammer down on and release. Like so. We can go ahead and remove our nut. <clears throat> and we can swing this out of the way. So now we're going to remove our speed sensor off the knuckle. This is a 10 mil bolt. So now we're going to go ahead and remove these last two bolts from our knuckle. They are 19 millimeters. We've got a 19 millimeter wrench, 19 millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and undo those now. We 
sprayed some rust penetrant on there, and that's what you're seeing smoking as it got pretty warm. So now that we've taken the nuts off of the back of this, we're gonna use a hammer. Go ahead and send them through. So now we're gonna try and pry open our pinch bolt here to try and drop down our control arm. I'm gonna do that with a small flathead screwdriver. And see if we can hammer it in far enough to open up that joint. So we went ahead and put a bolt in the top here, just so that way when we pry this whole unit isn't moving forward and it's allowing us to put pressure downwards on the control arm and the ball joint. So we're gonna switch out to a slightly wider pry tool, try and open this pinch bolt area. Now this is the area that's clamping around the ball joint. So you wanna open that. That's what we're trying to do here. bolt again and just be careful this is this whole assembly is free now so just keep one hand on it now we're going to take this with it make sure your axle is free go ahead Free your hub assembly, taking care not to damage your splines or threads here. Just set it down gently. So we have our knuckle set up here. We're going to remove the hub from the knuckle. We set up our tool to press it out. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So you can see here, our bearing came apart, our race is stuck on the hub, and this is stuck in here. That can be normal. So now we're going to go ahead and get our snap ring free. You can see this has been in here a while, rusted. So we're going to use a pry tool, just catch the end of our snap ring with the hammer, give it a couple of taps to see if we can break it free. We'll do that both sides. So we switched over to a punch. We worked around the perimeter, try and break the rust free from the snap ring, and we worked back and forth here. And you can see that we got a gap forming here, and we can try and get our tool inside there and pry in. We may have to work back and forth just a touch more. Go ahead. So now we get behind there, just pry outwards. So at this point, when you're hammering back and forth, you have loose rust residue and corrosion. You definitely want to wear some kind of safety, safety glasses. So at this point, the backing plate can come off. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove that. So we switched over to our press. We're gonna go ahead and press the back half of the bearing right through the knuckle. We'll go ahead and do that now.
So we're back at our press. We're going to go ahead and press in our bearing. If you notice on the back here, this dark ring, that's your magnetic pickup for your speed sensor. You do not, under any circumstances, want to put this down on a metal table or on any metal or have your screwdriver on or around this. It will mess up the speed sensor pickup. So with that noted, we're going to go ahead, place this in as level as you can. And get our press going. I'm going to use the old bearing on top. Is this the same circumference? And it will go easy. We'll go ahead and stack that. So now that we have our bearing pressed in here, we went ahead and cleaned out our groove for our snap ring. We also went ahead and cleaned our snap ring, the back side, top and bottom, so they fit in there nice. So now we're going to go ahead and press our snap ring back in place. Our snap ring is in. So now we're going to put our backing plate back on. Just center up the holes. Go ahead, give it a couple of taps all the way around. Make sure it goes on evenly. And <clears throat> So now that we've got our hub set up on the bearing in the press, we're going to go ahead and press it in. So we're going to spray some copper never sees on the spline and the threads here. So we're going to go ahead and install our knuckle back into the vehicle. First thing we're going to do is align our axle to the splines. bearing, our hub, like so. We'll go ahead and rotate it in place and lift up over onto our ball joint. What we'll do here is install our two top bolts just by hand to hold it in place. Now we can work on installing our ball joint on our lower control arm. So now we're going to put our ball joint back in here. What I'm going to do is use a pair of channel locks just to try and align the ball joint a little better. Like so. And couple of wax on the arm, get that ball joint back in place. Now we can thread our pinch bolt back in. The 
So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down our two top bolts here. They're 19 millimeters. So we have a 19 millimeter wrench, 19 millimeter socket. Let's go ahead and tighten those down. If you're going in from this side, be careful, be cautious of your brake lines. We're gonna go ahead and torque these down to the specified rating in just a minute. Just getting these snugged up. So now we're gonna go ahead and torque these down to the specified rating, which is 91 foot-pounds. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our pinch bolt for our ball joint. That's a 17 millimeter. So a 17 millimeter wrench on one side, 17 millimeter socket on the other. We're just gonna go ahead and snug these up. We're gonna go ahead and torque this pinch bolt down to 52 foot pounds. A wrench on one side, torque wrench on the other. So now we can reinstall our speed sensor. There's a clip in the back here. I'm gonna go ahead and install that now. I'm just gonna feed the wire into the clip with a pair of pliers. We'll squeeze that clip closed. And you don't have to flatten the cable. You're just trying to put enough pressure on that cable so it doesn't come out. And then we'll move on to the next, which is down here behind the brake hose. Before we do that, we'll go ahead and put this clip back in place. There's two holes, one on each side here where these tabs go. Just slides right in, right over, right into place. Now we know the length of this cable here and where it should sit. Again, slides right into the clip. And we can squeeze that clip with a pair of pliers. Just to hold the cable in place. Now on the other side, we can go ahead and install the speed sensor into the hub. And the speed sensor seats in to the hole back here. And your 10 millimeter bolt holds it in place. Go ahead and thread that in now. So with a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna snug this bolt up. And then we're going to torque it down to 76 foot-pounds. So now we're going to go ahead and reattach our tie rod. Line up your pin with your hole. And push up and thread your bolt back in. This is a 17 millimeter, so we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Just snug it up and then we'll torque it down. We're gonna go ahead and torque down our tie rod nut. 18 foot pounds. So now on our axle, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our washer. There is a flat part to the washer and a beveled part. It's gonna go on the same way it came off. Flat part against the hub and our castle nut. We go ahead and thread this on, snug it up by hand, and we're gonna to torque it down to 107 foot-pounds. So now, with the vehicle down or the wheels locked up, we can go ahead and put 107 foot-pounds of torque on that castle nut. And while doing that, you wanna make sure that you can get a cotter pin through this hole. So we're gonna go ahead on this side, I have a better angle. I'm just gonna give it 
a little more. And now we should be able to get our cotter pin through. Just want to go ahead and turn this. And go ahead and bend one side to lock the cotter pin in place. install. We'll go ahead and put those two lug nuts back on. You can use one lug nut. I just like to keep it evenly seated. So now we're going to go ahead and reinstall our caliper bracket. Go ahead and slide it into position. Thread in our bolts. And with our 17 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and snug these up. And we'll tighten them down to the specified torque. So now we're going to torque these two caliper bracket bolts, 74 foot pounds. 17 millimeter socket. So now before we install our brake hardware, I'm going to put a little brake grease where the pads will sit. We're going to do this off the caliper bracket so that way we're not getting grease on our new rotor. Just apply where the pads will sit. Now we can install this onto our caliper bracket. Like so. Repeat for the top, and if you do get grease on your rotor, make sure you go back, wipe it up with some brake parts cleaner. Now we can install our brake pads into the clip and rotate in place. Same with the other side. Into the clip. Rotate in place. Now we're ready to mount our caliper. So we'll go ahead and remove it from its hanger. Before we do that, we're going to look at the piston seal, make sure there's no leaks. If there are any leaks or any wet spots around this piston, that's an indicator that you need to replace your caliper. Ours looks pretty good, so we're going to reinstall it. Go ahead and slide it into place. Making sure to compress your boots, your rubber boots, top and bottom, so that they don't get ripped. And now you can install your pins. We're going to put a little grease on our caliper pins.
Go ahead and tighten those down with a 14 millimeter socket. Now that our caliper bracket, the caliper and pads are installed, we can take these two lug nuts off of our rotor and install the tire. We're going to just take these off our 17 mil socket. It should just be finger tight. Now we'll install the tire. So with the 17 millimeter socket, we'll go ahead and snug up these bolts. Now with the tire on the ground, so it's unable to rotate, we'll go ahead and grab our 17 millimeter socket, set it to 73 foot pounds torque, and we're gonna run around these lug nuts in a star pattern to lock the wheel on. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.